Hey gang, Scott here. Today's video is a review of OWCs, that's Other World Computing's Mercury Elite Pro Dock, which is a mouthful to say. It's a storage device. I'm in the market for storage, uh, at least I was until now. You know, video takes up a lot of storage space. It chews up a lot more disk than my photos and I needed to grow beyond the eight terabytes of storage that I had. It was hitting, uh, getting close to that eight terabyte limit, looking around and decided to go with OWC's Mercury Elite. So I'm gonna run down the basics of this device with you, tell you how it's been performing for me, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, if you're in the market for storage, hopefully this will help you out. So what is the OWC Mercury Elite Pro Dock? And I'm just gonna call it the Mercury from this point forward. That name is too long to say every time. So the Mercury is a Thunderbolt 3 connected piece of storage. Thunderbolt 3, it is fast. The specs say up to 500 megabytes a second for the storage access. And we'll get to some speed tests and I'll show you how well it's performing for me and my setup. Uh, inside the chassis, you have two different drives, or, well, two drives. You can configure them as RAID 0, so striped, one big chunk of storage. RAID 1 is mirrored. You can have it as just a bunch of disks. That choice is yours, and the setup will guide you through all of that. I wanted a large, just big chunk of storage so that I can have all of my photos and videos, you know, that whole setup in one place. I opted for the 24 terabyte storage size. I'm moving from roughly about eight terabytes of storage and I'm really bumping up close to the edge of that. It took me, you know, I did the math. It's like, all right, this 24 should last me another good five years after that. Well, you know, um, I'll worry about that in four to five years. So you get a large capacity. You can get a very large capacity of storage. Also, the box is hardware RAID. Hardware meaning the storage device is doing any of the striping or mirroring if you've set up it as RAID. You're not using your computer's CPU to do all that work. And I want that, that's what I want. I want the storage device to do the storage, manage all that stuff. I want my computer's CPU to be chugging on you know, video and, and editing photos and, and that level of things. Uh, that does bring up one point though. If you're getting this chassis and you're doing RAID with it, you know, it's its own little proprietary bubble. You may want to get two of them so that you have some redundancy as far as the storage device itself or have a cloud backup, something like that. So anytime you have hardware-based RAID, you know, you're really buying into the storage device's way of managing things. So plan for if the event of the chassis itself fails, where are you going to get your data? Cloud backup, another disk that you're backing up to, something like that. So keep that part in mind. But that's the basics of it. Let's take a look at the, the what's in the box and what the ports and various things are next. So in the box you have the Mercury itself, power cable, Thunderbolt 3 cable. On the front of the Mercury is an SD card reader so that has some extension ports on it. And on the back there are Thunderbolt ports, there are USB 3.1 ports, there's an Ethernet port as well. Now the Ethernet is for your computer. You know, the storage dock, this is a dock, has a bunch of storage with it. It's also a pass through to these other device ports. So that ethernet would be for your computer. You cannot set this box up as a network chunk of storage. It's not a NAS. It's just, this is an ethernet port that you can access from your computer once you have connected it, you know, connected the mercury to your computer. Uh, there is no power button which uh, may or may not be uh, of, of uh, concern to you, but it's worth noting. And once you plug this in, there's always some level of power draw happening with it. So that's the overall of the chassis and the, the setup itself. It's nice, the number of ports are nice, the extensive uh, USB 3, uh, the ethernet's a nice touch. I do really like the SD card reader on the front. That is a, a, a nice, nice thing to have, at least on my Mac Pro here reaching around to the back to try to put something in an SD slot. I don't need to do that anymore. It's really accessible for me. So I, I like that touch on the Mercury. Uh, let's, um, let's talk about the setup of the system next. Now I mentioned you can configure the two drives that are in it as RAID 0, RAID 1, just a bunch of disks, and there's a small little uh, switch, I'll call it, on the back to make those changes. It arrives by default set up as RAID 0. So using both drives, 
as one large piece of storage, although it's not formatted quite yet. There is a utility that's on the drive, accessible as soon as you plug the drive in, that you need to run to go do the configuration. It's pretty straightforward. It runs itself, it just kind of walks you through. It's almost like installing a piece of software, especially if you're just doing the RAID 0 out of the box, get me started with one large chunk of storage. It was very easy. I had one little quirk with Mac OS where you, you know the Mac OS has some security things where it doesn't want applications to access all of your disks and all of your folders. You have to give it permission. And there was something weird with the install program or I had to give the permission ahead of time as opposed to trying to do it during the flow of the install. It's like you know, the, the yes, you can access these devices box would get grayed out and I couldn't proceed, but it was easy enough to work around. I think that's more of a quirk with Mac OS as opposed to the Mercury itself. So setup was really straightforward, easy, and in a handful of minutes, the storage is ready to go. Now, what about the speed? What about the performance? How well does this stand up to that 500 megabytes a second spec that it has out there? Uh, and it's pretty good. Uh, I ran Blackmagic's speed test. This is a free download you can get. I'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested in just testing out your own kit. Uh, it's also on the Mac App Store if you're a Mac user. And I got reasonably close to 500 megabytes a second. I was in like the 450, 460, and the way the Blackmagic speed test lays things out, it shows you is this speed good enough to do 4K video editing or 1020, uh, sorry, 1080p video editing directly from that device? And for some 4K video, the specs were saying, yeah, or the speed results were saying, yes, this is, uh, this is good, you can do this. And that 4K at least works for me. It's like the Apple ProRes 4K. I'm gonna be very happy with uh, the, the speed from this device, and I can tell you already, it's working very well. I'm actually doing this video and it's recording to this device and I will render the video that you're watching now from this device in real time. It, it's, it's doing a, a great job. So um, if you're looking to do 4K video, I expect you'll be quite happy with speed coming out of this Thunderbolt. Um, there are some things that I don't like though. Uh, and so let's go through them. So first, uh, this is, the size of the Thunderbolt cable. You know, it, it's it's comically small. Uh, I get the reason why though. For, to get Thunderbolt 3 speeds, the cable needs to be like less than a meter. So, you know, a little less than three feet, maybe pushing to like three and a half to four feet. So you can't really put these drives far away from your machine. And the reason that's kind of important, at least to me, is these drives are noisy. The fan in them runs all the time. You may actually still hear it on this recording. Uh, it's loud. I actually got an app and did some sound testing on it to find out how loud this drive is just there spinning versus when it's not. And it's very noticeable. So the fan noise is loud. That's like my biggest gripe with the drive. Uh, if you're doing recording like this kind of thing here and the drive is nearby, uh, you're going to pick it up on the mics. And you're gonna have to do some additional work in your audio post-processing to try to filter some of that out. Hopefully I've done a decent job on this video and it's not too terribly noticeable. I would like to explore getting some type of um, sound barrier to put around the drives. Of course, the trade-off being I can't do that all the time because then there'll be heat. Now the drives do run very cool. Uh, I had the drives run overnight. I left them on, left them busy, left them doing things. And the, the, the chassis, the unit, everything around was, was very cool. So the fans are doing their job. They're just loud. So if you're doing recording and you have these drives nearby, be aware of that. When I'm working with the machine and I'm doing my normal stuff, I actually wear a pair of uh, noise canceling headphones so I can just, you know, kind of get in the zone with my photos and my videos so I don't really notice it. But for recording, something to be aware of. Uh, one other thing that, um, it's kind of a, you know, I, I say it's something I, I don't particularly like compared to older drive systems that I had, is if I need to do a hard drive replacement, you know, those two drives in there, 
it's not like you can just open the top up with like a spring-loaded lock and slide in and out drives. Uh, this is more, you know, unscrew chassis, take things apart, uh, and, you know, get a drive in there. I have not bothered to take apart this system. You know, I just got it. It's working great. Why would I do that? But I did notice that it's not going to be a, a simple drive replacement if you do need to do a, a hard drive swap. All right, so wrapping things up, you know, summing this up, how we're all, what's, what's the takeaway here? I think it's a, it's a very good device. And for the price, it's quite good. It's comparably priced. The 24 terabyte one that I got ran a little more than $1,000 US. And that was comparable. Looking at other Thunderbolt 3 chassis in the same neighborhood of storage, like in the neighborhood of 20 terabytes, this was a good price. I saw others that were a little more expensive and didn't include a Thunderbolt 3 rated cable. Like they give you a Thunderbolt 3 cable, you could connect it up, but it was longer and so you can only get half the bandwidth. So pay attention to that when you're looking around at Thunderbolt 3 drives. You know, it's a shorter cable, but if you want the speed benefit, you need to go with a short cable. Uh, so it's, it's a very good price for the storage. And what really swayed me to get this one was including the Thunderbolt 3 cable for maximum speeds, as well as all the additional ports. I mentioned the, the SD card reader on the front, that's a nice touch. Uh, it's just a, kind of a bonus. It, wasn't, it wouldn't make or break the deal. I wouldn't buy this just for that, but it certainly was nice to have, and I already put it to good use. The big negative is the noise. It's a noisy drive. Uh, I say noisy. It's not like it's clanging and banging around. It's a constant fan running in the background and it is noticeable. I, I can hear it right now as I'm talking. And if you're doing recording, be aware of that. And if you're sensitive to machine noise, then you may want to have either noise canceling headphones, or if you've got some sort of desk set up where you're within three feet and you can have the drive you know, hidden behind you or so forth, just out of your way and not in your immediate uh, auditory zone, that'd be a plus. But uh, that's the takeaway. That's the OWC Mercury Elite Pro Dock. Uh, I, I do recommend it. I'm happy with the performance. I'm happy with the, the overall experience with it. And I hope this video helped you out if you're in the market for some storage. Got questions, you know, go ahead and fire them off below. I'm not a storage expert, but I can do my best to answer basic questions about the unit itself. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.